Good morning, and check out this beautiful view I've had from my campsite last night and this morning. This is looking out onto Fruta, Colorado. That's the town that's down here. Grand Junction is just a little bit farther to the east over here. Today is day 14, I think, of this trip, of this Colorado trip, and today will be the last full day of this trip, the last video from this trip. I'm heading home uh, later today, and then I'll get home tomorrow. I'll be spending some, some time with family over the next day or so. So, today's our last day, and it'll be a good one. I'm excited for today. I'm meeting up with a friend of mine. His name is Dennis. He's been in a couple of videos before. A few years ago, he had a minivan that he would use to camp out of, and so we did a like a tour of his minivan. And then also we went together on a two or three day kayak camping trip in southeastern Utah. And that was a lot of fun. I'll put links to both of those videos in the description. I'm meeting him just up the road here at a trailhead in about an hour. So I have a little bit of time. But today I'll be exploring part of McGinnis Canyon's National Conservation Area. More specifically, an area called Rattlesnake Arches. And as you might expect, this area has a ton of arches in it. I think I might have read online that it's home to the second highest concentration of arches after Arches National Park in the world. So a lot of arches that we'll be seeing today, at least a half dozen, I think. As you may or may not know, I've spent a lot of time in Arches National Park. I wrote a hiking guidebook to Arches National Park. And so it'll be interesting to see how this compares. Is this really an alternative to arches? I mean, I'm guessing this will be just a ton less crowded. The road getting out here is long and uh, it's not a four wheel drive road, but you probably want at least an SUV with a little bit of clearance to get out here. So that keeps people away. And just the remoteness and the fact that it's lesser known will mean that there will be fewer people out there in general, I'm assuming. And so I'm really excited. And here's a view of the campsite itself. It's not much as far as the actual campsite goes. It's, I mean, barely big enough for one, maybe two cars, but it's a beautiful spot. I mean, you can't beat the views out there. And we're off. Dennis showed up, he drove by as I was getting stuff ready at camp. That's, I don't think you can see it, but that's his Jeep out in front of me here. So we're both just driving out to the trailhead. It's another, I think like five, five or six miles, something like that. Yeah, you definitely want high clearance for this road. My RAV4 would not have made it out here. A minivan or just a regular car would not make it out here. And we have arrived. It's about nine o'clock. We are the only ones here. There's a kind of a small parking area. Then the trail itself starts right here. So Dennis, what have you been up to the last few years? Since, oh man. Since everyone has seen you. Let's see. I wasn't ready for this question, so let me think about it. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how long this hike is going to be. Uh, the information I have says anywhere between six and eight miles. There are a couple of side trips that we can do here, so not exactly sure what the final mileage will be. And then I think the I think most people do the hike as, as an out and back. So they do the hike and then they re retrace their steps back. We're going to try to do it as a loop to, to save some time, save some distance. And that might require a little bit of, um, a little bit of scrambling up some slick rock. So we'll see how it goes. If that looks too sketchy or hard or whatever, then we'll just retrace, retrace our steps too. It's not a big deal. Drones look cool though. Sounds <laughs> like a fun. It is a, it's a fun day. Yeah. And about half an hour into the hike, we are at our first arch. This one's unique in that it's in a tower, it's part of a tower. 
This is called a window rock tower, window arch tower. Window. What did I say? <laughs> window, <laughs> something like that. This side of it is a little bit too steep and sheer to climb up into. But we're gonna check out the other side, see if we can climb up into the the eye of the arch itself. Dennis is gonna give it a shot. It seems really familiar from the last video. Me climbing something stupid. <laughs> Yeah, well, what a cool arch though. I mean, it just looks like a, looks like a shark fin yeah. with an arch in the middle of it. Show me how it's done here. It looks, it looks easier from down below. <laughs> All right. There you go. Nice. I'd like to say I got you, but I only got you on video. The important part. <laughs> yeah. You're a little right of the way you went up. Am I? Yeah. That's, good. That's straight down from there. As the holds crumble away. Yeah. All right, nice. Safe. Sweet. I've never seen an arch in a tower before. It's really cool. Yeah, like I'm trying to think if there's something like this in Arches National Park. I don't think there is. Not really even like turret arch, but it's way bigger. This is, you know, a small feature with the hole in it is really unique. The shape is cool too. Well, that was awesome. We were just talking about how even this would be worth the hike. And this is just the first of hopefully many. I think most of them are more traditional arches. This one is, again, pretty unique, but uh, great start off to the adventure here. This was a lot of fun. Really beautiful and unique little, little rock formation. All right, our second arch is in sight. It's called Hole in the Bridge Arch. Let's see if you can see that. You can see the, the opening in there. Apparently there are actually three arches right there. There's, I think this is the main one, but there's one on the left and right side of it also. And then this cliff in general is just cool looking. It's just like undulating, just kind of strange looking rock. And then the canyon, we're hiking up the, the side of a canyon beautiful views out here. Just a gorgeous place. And no people. We are literally the only ones we've seen out here. All right, let's go take a closer look at this one. This is the main one. This is Hole in the Bridge Arch. I think for obvious reasons, there's the natural bridge with a hole in it. And then to the left, there's a smaller one, little, little pothole arch in the, kind of in the roof of that cave. And then that one that we saw earlier, we can't quite see from here. It's on the right side of this. We'll go take a look at that in a second, but take a closer look at this. That is, that is so cool. So here's the right side arch right here. Kind of hard to get a good view at the entirety of the opening, but with the sun where it is right now up here, it's coming through the arch and this little patch of sun is what comes through the arch. That's really neat. So that arch in the tower was the first one that we saw. And we saw these three, that's four total. I think there are 
three or four left. There are a lot of arches in this area and I don't remember what they look like. Like I, I looked at, at pictures of this hike several weeks ago and I don't really remember what's coming up. So we'll have to explore it together here. And just a few minutes up the trail here, we have two more arches. This one, I don't know what this one is called, but that's arch number five, I guess. Then arch number six, this is a big one. This is a big impressive one. This is called Centennial Arch. And we realized that this arch here, arch number five, actually has a pretty easy access route, or at least a reasonable access route to get right underneath it. So we're gonna go check that out, get a closer look. Dennis just said to me, you're gonna need your hands, but I, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Let's see if I can film with one hand and... Only there was a way to be filmed. I, <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. Dennis just said, if only there was a way to be filmed here. <laughs> it's like magic. I'm not used to having someone else around, all right? Thank you. <laughs> we were able to climb all the way up here to be directly below the arch. So we're sitting in this kind of cave or alcove here. And the view is just phenomenal. It's so quiet. What a place. Was that a controlled slide or uncontrolled? That was, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty controlled. And then right next door to that is arch number six, Centennial Arch, which is just a perfect arch that is so spectacular. Here's looking straight up from underneath the thing. So to give you a sense of the scale of this thing, there's Dennis right there. He's at the bottom of it. So, I mean, that's gotta be, what, 100 feet tall, 100 feet high, that opening, 50 or 60 feet across. And the arch itself, I don't know, 10, 15 feet thick. And then here's arch number seven. Not sure what the name of this one is, it's just, it's one that I don't have marked, but that, uh, you know, we've just kind of stumbled across. And again, there's some light coming through it from the sun. And here's a better look at that one from directly underneath it with the sun hidden behind it a little bit. Arch number eight. This one is Trap Arch. I think we can get up there. What do you think? Oh, we can get into there and see how steep it gets. Yeah, well, do you want to hold this as I? That you're going to ask me to volunteer. I was going to do that. I did the last one. <laughs>
the base of the arch here. We're sitting in this little alcove kind of thing. It's nice and shaded, so we're gonna stop here for a little lunch break, a snack break. And we have reached the end of the trail now, right in front of Cedar Tree Arch. Just another big, beautiful arch. For most people, this is the end of the trail and they you're supposed to just basically retrace your steps back around and do what we just did again. Apparently it's possible to climb up and out through the arch. So we're gonna take a look at that, see if it looks doable. If it looks doable, I mean, we've done quite a bit of scrambling already today, so we're primed we're ready. Uh, if it looks like it, it goes, then we'll, we'll give it a shot. If it looks too scary, we'll just hike back, but let's go get a closer look. Yeah, this first steep, I think, is going to be the crux, so to speak. But there's steps, Moki steps cut in right there. Oh, on the far left? Yeah. Nice. Maybe you can't see him from down there. No, I can't. Yeah, right here. Made for it. Okay, first up, we've got to make our way across this kind of more or less horizontal part. And someone has cut in some some moki steps right here. Usually when you see these, well, maybe not usually, ideally when you see these, these are um, Native American made. I highly doubt these ones are. Provide nice little hand and footholds though. And then here is the arch itself. This is arch number nine, I believe, of the adventure. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. In fact, that was easier than the other scrambles we did. <laughs> ah, it's nice to be in the shade. Nice to be directly underneath. That's a fat arch. It's a thick boy. All right, lead the way. I will follow. Oh wow, and here's, here's the arch from the back. And with that, I think we've basically completed our loop from here. It's another, well, like, 15 minutes back to the car. Yeah, it's right over there. So pretty, pretty much all done here. Came up through the last arch, number nine. And the views here are just, as they have been the whole time, just fantastic. And you can even see trap arch, which was arch number eight. That's where we sat and hung out for a while. Had some snacks underneath the, the arch in the alcove over there. So Dennis and I finished up with the hike here and we're on our way out back to the car. And we, uh, there's a guy up here doing some plein air painting, just uh, painting the landscape up here. It's really, um, he did a really beautiful painting here that I want to show you and I'll introduce you to, to him and we'll uh, link to his Instagram account down below and everything. So check this out. Here's the, the arch, the scene. And here's the painting. Isn't that amazing? Just the talent that some people have. He said this only took him uh, like an hour and a half, two yeah, hours, a couple hour hours. Half, two hours, something like that. So this is Lauren, he's the artist here. Uh, tell the people about the, the kind of art you do. So uh, I'm mostly a plein air landscape painter, but I also do some scientific illustration and, uh, and a bit of uh, commissions, it's things like boat portraits. And, and uh, today I'm just hanging out, painting for the Colorado canyons and, and uh, monument plein air 
Invitational. I'll put his Instagram account, uh, his handle up on the screen, and I'll put links to it in the video description too to check out his stuff. Uh, if anybody else is interested, I've also got a website. It's laurenakins.com. L-O-R-E-N-E-A-K-I-N-S.com. Awesome. And yeah, again, I'll put links to, to all that stuff in the video description. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave him to paint his stuff here and we'll hit the road, get back on the, back on the trail. We made it back to the trailhead. I'm a little bit parched. Are you thirsty? It's it's warm. It's a hot day. It's what, yeah. like 90, 80s? Yeah. It's a warm day today. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. My voice sounds a little bit thirsty, I guess. <laughs> so total distance, 5.81 miles for that hike uh, with about 650 feet of elevation gain. It took us three and a half hours. And Dennis recorded it on his GPS watch. And what did yours say? I've got, so, well, I started at a half mile late. So mine says seven miles. Um, same time, of course, but yeah, interesting the difference yeah. in the distance. Mine said 5.8, his said 7. Yeah, you get so, that in the canyons though with the satellite signal bouncing off the walls. That's true. So overall, it was an awesome hike. Oh yeah, really good hike. Uh, how do you think, think it compared to hiking in Arches National Park? Um, well, way fewer people. That was great. I've never been alone in Arches, I think, and yeah. the density of Arches was really cool. I think the um, maybe some, like we were talking about, some of the individual arches are maybe not as spectacular as one-off ones you get in arches, but yeah. I'd take this anytime. It's just, I mean, now it's, there's a few people out here now. We saw, we ran across a couple of people, but yeah, like basically isolated. Yeah. In three and a half hours of hiking, we saw one guy walking past us while we were perched up in one of the alcoves below the arches. And then we saw like one guy at the end. Yeah. And like, that's it. That's, yeah, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> They're really not crowded at all. No, no tour buses. No, no. certainly not. <laughs> I don't think a tour bus could make this road. No, it's a rough drive getting in here. A little bit of a rough road. This is, this is awesome. This is definitely worth doing. If you have been to Arches and want a similar kind of experience, but with fewer people, we can definitely recommend this. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to head back to Dennis's house now. And there's one more thing that uh, he's going to gift to me that uh, I think you guys would be interested in. So we'll meet back up with you once we, once we get there. So here we are at Dennis's and uh, he has a road shower. I don't know if you guys have seen these before, but basically it's a, it's, it's aluminum, right? Yeah. So it's a metal tube with a couple of valves on it and, uh, and a hose attached to it. And you add it to the top of your car. I'm going to be putting it up here over on the left side of the Yukon and it heats up in the sunlight and, uh, you can pressurize it with a, with an air compressor or a a, um, a bike pump, mm -hmm. and then you can add like a. Dennis was just showing me like a. What do you call it? Like, like a, a garden hose sprayer. Yeah, a garden hose sprayer thing for a shower head on the end there, and you have a nice little portable hot shower that's always with you. At least that's the that's the theory. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. So when I had this on my minivan over there, I put a piece of PVC along here as a rigid structure so you could just swing this out and it would stay freestanding so you could stand under it and shower you didn't have to hold it the whole time so do what you like that was my little addition to it um, yeah you just pump it up right here this is a radiator cap so it serves as your um, fill hole and also a pressure release I don't know what it is maybe 15 psi or something but yeah, the water gets actually pretty hot in here and um, good pressure. It's it's uh, actually it's a better shower than we've got in the new van and that's a pressurized water pump. This was I liked it. So enjoy. Hope you get some good use out of that. Thank you. I appreciate it. And here we have it now mounted to the Yukon. Took maybe oh, 10 minutes to tighten down the the nuts and bolts here. Here you go. And it's solidly on there. Dennis was saying that he thinks this is a five gallon tank, so should provide plenty of water for a couple showers, a few showers, I don't know. We'll have to put it to use and find out. All right, everyone, well, that'll do it for this video. I am going to drive to Moab now, which is about an hour and a half away, and I'm gonna do one or two things there, but that's not gonna be uh, in this video. That's not gonna be an SUV RVing video. I think that'll probably be an adventure know-how bonus video, so tune in over there if you wanna check that out. And I won't be able to test out the, uh, the roof shower on this trip because this is the last video that you'll see 
from this trip. So hopefully I'll be able to put it to good use in the future on future adventures. I appreciate Dennis giving that to me and uh, it's always fun to see him. Um, we've been friends for 10 plus years and so it's always fun to see him and hang out with him and we already have another trip, another adventure planned for next summer. So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed this Colorado trip series, whatever it's called, uh, the, this series of videos of going to Colorado and other places in the, in the area. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite part was and I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.